I was like, let's call it Smile on My Face. And she was like, no, nope. <laughs> it's a terrible title. <laughs> that doesn't make me will, smile. Nobody will ever listen to that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> she was like, that's so cornball. That's cornball on another <laughs> level. Like, and I was like, well, that's what the song is. And she was like, nah, we got to call it Gold Ray. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, it's Chris Cernell, and welcome to another episode of No Smoking, We're Rolling, the podcast where we do a deep dive into the creative process behind the music that moves us. Today is a special one for me. We have not one but two guests who happen to be amazingly talented, amazingly cool, fantastic songwriters, fantastic people, and I am lucky to call them friends. A decade or more ago, these two folks got married, started a band, got a record deal, got out of their record deal, and then recorded a little retro modern pop gem called Gold Rays, and that's the song we're gonna talk about today. Since its release in 2013, Gold Rays has been streamed 10 million times across Spotify, SoundCloud, YouTube, and every other streaming platform. It's been featured in commercials like VW, Abercrombie, Outback Steakhouse, Old Navy, a million TV shows. I've heard it walking around shopping malls, which is probably my favorite way to listen to music and find new music. And Ryan Seacrest picked up the song on his TV show and played the hell out of this summer anthem in the dead of winter. Here to chat about the creation of Gold Rays, I've got Brennan and Kara from the Vinyl Pinups. Welcome. Hey. Hey. What's up? Hey. Thanks for did having I, us, Chris. Did I get that right? You nailed it. And then you some. It. You were yeah. like a professional. I never realized we were such a big deal. You guys are huge superstars. <laughs> I feel so cool. I'm like, hell yeah, let's go. I'm awesome. Let's write another one. <laughs> <I love it. laughs> we're happy to be here. Yeah. I know. Thanks yeah. for having us. Thanks for getting babysitters and all that stuff and, and whatever it takes. So let's dive in here. I love the song. I'm a huge fan. I've been a huge fan for a long time. Where does the story of this song start? You know, we had lived in Nashville for a long time, and it was in the early 2000s. Well, not early. It was in 2010, 2011, something like that, man. Like, we just, we couldn't get anything going here. We were like pop kids. We were running around New York and running around L.A. and just had to get the heck out of here, you know? So we packed up our stuff and drove across the country and did the classic move to California thing. And no, we didn't have anywhere to live in place. We, we were like to live. straight up, like, we're just going to do it. Yeah. That's crazy talk, right? The streets of LA. Well, LA doesn't, yeah, they don't <laughs> welcome you there. You know, they're kind of <laughs> like, they're kind of like, hey, listen, you're going to have to show up before we're going to let you have an apartment, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so we did it. We showed up, we got in this apartment and kind of like, it was such an adventure. We kind of started living like a really amazing season of our life in Los Angeles. We had a lot of friends. We made a lot of friends really quick. We were really grateful to know a lot of people there already. Mm -hmm. And um, so we kind of just like got to work and we felt really kind of for the first time empowered to make whatever music we wanted to make because that's kind of what everybody there was doing. So fast forward, we had been there for about, you know, six months to a year and it just amassed all these songs that we were making in our apartment. The creative juices were flowing. Yeah, we just felt like really like uh, kind of this exciting season of our lives, you know, and we didn't feel like we needed needed to to write a certain thing or not write a certain thing or act a certain way or whatever. Um, and uh yeah, we just had. I had an iMac and some cracked plugins. I bought all of them ever since then. And we uh, <laughs> we just started. We were writing songs and making songs. And man, this song was like, okay, how can we make the simplest, happy, happiest, fastest, like no nonsense song possible that feels very California or feels very summery or anything? It was kind of like. We had started to kind of poke around the the film and TV scene and understand what that meant, you know, to create music that was kind of a, a an aesthetic or a background to mm -hmm. to scenes and that sort of thing. So like we were like, what's kind of the soundtrack for our life right now? <laughs> and, it, and it was like we were, we were looking out the window and like the sun was shining down on us and like the breeze was blowing from the top window of the cool little like apartment on Normandy Avenue and we were like. I got this feeling. Carry on. But like, Brennan was like, wait! Like, he went into full psycho mode and was like, this, 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 this. Like, the goal was to make it so simple and a really not too complex, you know? 
not to overthink anything, we kind of cut our teeth in Nashville and everything is really high level songwriting, really challenging lyrics, really high end musicianship. And it's, that's an amazing part of the city. Mm -hmm. um, but it, it's like you can get really overthinky as a young kid. You know, Gold Rays was kind of like a let's see just how what happens when we just stop thinking about it and just make it and not and, and just feel and just make it and feel it and go, hey, that's cool. Put it down. Call it a day. Hey, that's cool. Put it down. Call it a day. And that's kind of how it was. That was one of the things I wrote down was this song doesn't feel like anybody overthought anything. And every day of my life and probably your lives since then, you overthink every, like, does this need? Can we Absolutely. say that? Yeah. Wait, like, can we get to the chorus in yeah. 22 seconds? Is that allowed? You know, can we repeat yeah. the first half of the chorus the second time? Like, oh, maybe it needs a post. Yes. Oh, every rhyme is an I in the chorus. Can we really do that? Like, right? I mean, did these th yeah. did these thoughts come into your head at all, or did you just say no? We're just just well, going. This, that was the exercise. Not right? literally, no. Like that. That was the coolest part about this song, and I think that's where the magic happened. Is it was truly. In that apartment, we were like firing things left and right. Like, you put down this part, you put that down. Like, th like throw down the acoustic guitar and don't overthink it. Very like, low he, tech. He laid it out, mm -hmm. and it was like happening just before my eyes. And then I heard like a whistle part, like the melody, and I was like, "Let's do it." Like, Brennan was like, "Lay it down." It, it just kind of we kept layering on vocals on top of vocals and like harmonies and all these vibes, and we just we literally didn't overthink a thing. And it was. That was the cool part of the whole process of that song, which made it magic, I feel like. Th that is the lesson, right? Like, stop overthinking. Every, like, But yet we still are overthinking everything every other day of our lives. And yet, yeah. you know, I know, the biggest hit songs are the ones where you're like, hey, let's not overthink it. Let's have fun. Let's. I mean, like, one of the things I wrote down was, like, this song feels like you guys woke up with a smile. Let's not overthink anything. Let's make sure we can finish this early so we can get to the beach for happy hour and not, uh, right? I mean, in... Totally. You're, and it's not entirely untrue. And, mm -hmm. and you know, we talk about it all the time. It's like, mm -hmm. you know, being committed to your craft and doing great work is important. And so you should really work hard to, to learn the, the, everything that's involved with, like, writing great songs, making great records, like, you know, whatever you're doing, like making great mixes or sounds or whatever you do, like, like work to be great at it. But there is like after you put in a significant amount of time, sometimes you have to just trust your brain, you know, and mm -hmm. go like, okay, well, maybe we just need to just see what comes out. And then, and then like, let it go. We'll move on. We'll write another song tomorrow. You know, I don't right. think that, I think we both knew it was like, okay, we did a good job today, but I don't think we had any idea. I don't think we had any idea what, we're, what it was going to do. No. You know, I, um, I, I want to come back to yeah. that in a, in a minute, um, which is, a, that's a, another whole other side of it. When was the first thing, like, you knew you had something? Like, the whistle, I want to get into that a little bit, too, but was it that? Was it the guitar? Was it just the sun was shining? Kara says, I got to... What was the first thing that was like... Oh, the title, What you know, where where was the first, like, spark of we got something here, maybe? Is I think it was the acoustic, okay? Yeah. Because I, the, the, the acoustic just felt so right, and it, I felt like the way he was, like, even cradling it in his arms, it sounds so cheesy, but, like, it just... I keep saying magic, but like that moment was so magic for me and everything was happening so fast. Like, I wish I could even like show you guys, like put you there in that moment. Brennan was in like a full mode, like a mode that I've never seen. Like you were like <laughs> psycho or something. Like, <laughs> Don't forget that moment. And he was just like directing, like do this. Okay. And then I would like run over to the microphone and like lay it down and like place it. But I don't think that we, I think every single thing that you hear on the track was like in the moment like we just kept going yeah. we kept going for it it was yeah it was very one it of was the cool and, and we've you know to be honest man we've tried to recreate that a million times <laughs> and it's like it's a it really and truly is like kind of just a, a challenging thing to do especially like the further along you get the more people you work with the more you know i mean i know so much more than i knew back then and maybe it's i don't know if mm -hmm. it's a good thing <laughs> You know. You've sort of suggested that you don't love the mix of it or those things, whatever. And I'm like, I listened to it just this morning. Went on a walk. It's beautiful. It was sunny out. It felt amazing for the for the. It's 40 degrees and sunny out today, Chicago. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm like, this mix is perfect. The vocal sits in <laughs> so well. The the whistle. There's the point. I know. There's the point right there. Is he's here saying like, oh, but maybe the mix could be this way. And it's like if we had yeah. done that in that moment, maybe it wouldn't be as is today. No. So I think that that's like so good, a good reminder for everybody to not 
fully overthink things and just feel it. Yeah. Feel it for sure. Well, we were we were in a place where we were like, okay, you know, we didn't have a deal. We didn't have a budget for anything. Mm-mm. And we had just moved to LA and we were like trying to get by and trying to find ways to make money and all that kind of stuff. And so like it was really like, hey, we gotta if we want to do this stuff, like we have to do it ourselves, you know. So uh, I always I was really big into Pensado's place at the time. Right, yeah. <laughs> so sure. I, I credit like the entirety of the first uh, vinyl pinups EP to Pensado's place because it was like <laughs> everything everything in there was just like, well, this is, we, you know, it has to sound good. I don't know how we're going to get there, but it has to sound good. You know, What, what, um, were, the, what so. were the Pensado tricks back then? Yeah, do, do share. I can't, I don't know these things. <laughs> I, you know, I don't think it was too crazy. I think it was just, it's all normal stuff that everybody knows now. But, you yeah. know, back then, you know, you had to, you had to really learn like what parallel compression is or like right. how to use, you know, decapitator is not a blast off distortion, but more <laughs> use it like a, you know what I mean? Like right. stack it up or stage it up or, right. and, and all that kind of stuff, you know? Right. If you're going to use that much reverb, you have to EQ it, all that kind of stuff we can right. go down that that route no right no right i love it i love it i think song, though, you know i think this is also a lesson on like the superpower of good enough if like being okay with good enough and moving forward on things is great because again if you mm-hmm. if you shoot for perfection yeah. or i've ruined so many songs overthinking them or just rewriting them trying it's like no the uh, i mean I'm, I'm sure you guys have done the same thing but yeah good enough yeah. is yeah. Moment, momentum is key yeah. yeah so the whistle who's the whistler who Kara? do you think the whistler is? Of course, I know. I Maybe. know you're the whistler because I know that. Yes, <laughs> I'm a professional. Okay, I am a professional whistler. Kara has, because of gold rays, been hired to whistle. Like, of course she has union whistler. <laughs> of course she has. I, and and uh, like, no, the, really? can you still do it? Oh my gosh! Don't make me laugh. Okay. <laughs> Not as choppy as it used to be. You know, a mid smile. Was that the first melody you started whistling? Yeah, I mean, from my from my memory, I'm pretty sure that was the first one that came out. And I feel like we heard it like um, as a melody first. Like we were like, uh, 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 and then we were in that summer mode. So we were like, why don't we make it a whistle? Because it sounds more carefree that way. So we layered. How many how many whistles do you think we layered? Because you when you layer them, it sounds like a big wall, obviously. Yeah, that's the that's the nerdy part of it. But we layered a bunch. I think we layered. I think we layered four or five Mm -hmm. and they have to they can't be in tune with each other no you know that's like a big key you can't you can't tune them so if they're because if they're too in tune they sound stupid you know um so so like she has to like whistle one and then she whistles another and once we get that one good okay she did a couple takes of that great now Mm -hmm. she does another one and if that one's not out of tune in the right ways you gotta do it again so we just kind of like kept going no no there's another do it again 80% 80% of the time was spent comping whistles and putting them together and stacking them up. Yeah, all right. Yeah, right. <laughs> Pretty much, because the song came together so fast, we could yeah. focus on those whistles, which, let me tell you, those whistles are key. Like, you just yeah. know it the second you hear that guitar. and the- It's so good. I like, I mean, it's it's such Thank a great you. hook. The performance of it's so good. The the mix of it is so good. And here's the thing. It, th- I've, so I've listened to the song a hundred times, and I listened to it probably another <laughs> 50 the last week uh, preparing for mm-hmm. this. I just figured out, you probably already know this, that the melody of the whistle is the melody of the chorus, basic. Did, you guys had to have known that, right? No, I actually didn't know that until you just said that. <laughs> what? <laughs> You're joking. <laughs> You're just, Are you joking? No, I'm not kidding, man. No, no. no. It was I'll not put the smile It wasn't intense. <laughs> it's this. No. No? no. It, you didn't know you? that? <laughs> this is blowing my mind. I don't even know if it was just like in the brain and we didn't think oh, about it, man. but it felt like two separate parts. It's yeah. you it learned does, something new. It wow. totally feels. I can't believe Brennan, Brennan learned something new that. about the song today. That's well, just, you listen. Or in general, you. he knows everything all the time. I'm like, you. hey, guess what? He's like, I already knew it. I told you we were being very unimaginative. We were like that. You put now the just smile sing on my face. Oh my god. Yes. You didn't know that either. What? No! <laughs> I'm smoking something, right? Look yeah. at me. So I was in the shower, oh this is great. going through this, and I'm like, "Oh, because I was, because you know, you whistle sometimes the melody. I was just whistling. Oh, like, oh, it's the same thing. 
I can't believe it. You're right. Wow. It feels that like that was un- unintentional. So good. Yeah. Well, here, but, but you know what? So good. It's it's all good. But here's the beauty of it. It's foreshadowing the hook. So like you already have that melody. Like you can sing that chorus by the second half of the first chorus. Because you've already heard the whistle mm-hmm. yeah. three or four times. You've heard the first half of the chorus, and boom. I love that you guys did not. It's familiar. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that, yeah. That's great. Didn't that know. It, it was, it was, <laughs> wow. Okay. That's okay. I, I wish we could just do like, oh, it's one of my big, it's one of my pop tricks, man. <laughs> you know what? I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that on the next gold Yeah, let's that we do made. it. But here's, do the, it. Pro- here's yeah. the problem. Now when you start thinking about it, you're, it's just, uh, you can't. You can't capture no. it. You gotta just you gotta just go with it. No. I I love that. So Evelyn, my six year old, listened to it and I said, Do you have any questions for, for these guys? And she said, Yeah. Why is this song called Gold Rays? Because they don't she you know, it's just buried in the verse. She's like, they don't even say gold rays, it's something about the sunshine. So why why is it called yeah. Gold Rays? She wants to know. That was me. I feel like because it was a shorter, cooler title. Yeah, I felt like (laughs) yes. And for me, I was like, "This is like different." I haven't heard the title before. Yeah, it still is symbolic for the sun and like sunshine. And you have a thousand songs in the world that are like, "You are my sunshine," or like, "Oh, Mister Sun." Like everything says sun, and I'm like, "Let's think of a different way to say that." And I thought that Gold Rays was really cool, and it just said something and was really really awesome so and we said it once but i liked that about it i was like yeah and it just that was cool to me i thought it was like super hipster hipster Kara's, way Kara's art vibe I'm, I'm all about it <laughs> and it and it gets people asking questions which is which is key you want yeah. people to ask the questions yeah. you want people to know well what's the story so yeah. did gold rays the title come before it was in the line or did you pull it out of the first line we wrote all the lyrics i was really into um the one sentence chorus mm-hmm. back back then and i'm st- i still am I, I like songs that are just one sentence for the chorus right this one's two i guess yeah or semicolon maybe mm-hmm. but like not i don't know the art of really being able to just say one line or two lines and that be all you need to say mm-hmm. yep was like cool to me yeah. so i was like how like how simple can we make this but also say a lot it was like okay well how about you know you put the smile on my face like the sunshine and i won't cry 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 because you're mine all mine and i was like it could be friends it could be uh, yeah. an ice cream cone it could yep. be a uh, cold beer it could be yep. uh, very universal people in love it could be like a car that they just bought it could be yeah. anything so so it was like okay let's write that that course is cool and then we're like well how do we talk about that and then we, i was like okay here's the first verse and then, and then Kara was like okay how about the second verse goes like this blah 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 and we just basically wrote all that sang all of it and then we're like well what what do we want to call it and Kara was like well gold i was like I was like, let's call it Smile on My Face. And she was like, no, nope. <laughs> it's a terrible title. That doesn't Nobody make me will, smile. Nobody will ever listen to that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> she was like, that's so cornball. That's cornball on another <laughs> level. Like, and I was like, well, that's what the song is. And she was like, nah, we got to call it Gold Race. <laughs> <laughs> you, she's, she's got a gold race. Gold race shirt on i love it yeah i love it yeah i know i know yeah i'm Those representing are, yeah. yeah and i was like you sing the first verse i sing the second verse it's like a little bit of like a guy first and a girl and it, it worked it's got and like we a sing cool the co- and we sing the chorus together yeah like you know like like a husband so. and wife would yeah i guess so yeah you know <laughs> well it's always hard in a duo because everybody's like well so who sings background? Who sings lead? And like, do you guys sound kind of like, you know, I don't know, Johnny and June? And you're like, well, no. You know, I, I make we the sound beats. Like us. Yeah. So it's it's a trip. You know, it is. Kind of getting through that. This song could have been, it could have, it could have turned out too campy, maybe. You know what I mean? Like, if you called uh-huh. it Smile on My Face, uh-huh. it might have been like, ooh, you know, but Gold Rays is so cool. You know, the whistle, the way you <laughs> mixed it. Like, I mean, you're just doing like the four chords of doom, right? On the on the chord progression. Oh yeah. But oh, yeah. but it well, feels yeah. cool. It and, and this is something you guys are, are pros at. Like, if I did this song, it wouldn't have been cool. I, I would have called it smile on my face probably. <laughs> I wouldn't say that. It I wouldn't, wouldn't say, have been cool. Well you didn't have you didn't have her to tell you that I'd, smile on my face is a terrible time. I'd have been like, damn it, hush, get it together, get it together. <laughs> All right, yeah. now I know I need Karen. Well, I mean, like, you know, 
it was it was yeah. a it was an interesting time, you know, if you remember back then, because like I think we had just started writing with you, and you know we're like writing, you know, with APG and and you know Universal writers and Interscope artists and all this stuff, and we're all running around, and everybody at the time was so bent on like what is the edgiest thing we can say, and what is the most jacked up lyric we can write, and how dirty can we be, and all this, and so it's like when we wrote this, we were like it's so. <laughs> corny but i don't care because i'm kind of like dirty lyric out i don't know yeah. <laughs> you know yes. what i mean like we were so tired of writing that because you know it was, just felt try hard and it was ironic that like the kind of cheesy happy lyrics didn't feel try hard you know right right um, that, exactly so, it, yeah no. it doesn't feel like that like again if you read it you might go oh this is no. like you know like a just such a happy Go lucky song, but it feels ten years later mm. still super cool. It feels fun. It Dude, feels cool. I put my kids like they <laughs> don't know. So it's exciting. I, I I mean I I feel like this song you could still this is this is still a hit today. It could come out today and become another hit. Re-release it. Thanks. I'll remaster right, let's it. Do it. Yeah, yeah. I don't mean, overthink it. Don't, don't overthink it, and don't rename it. <laughs> well, it's been it's officially been ten years. Maybe you know. Yep. This spring has been 10 years. It came out in January of 2013. I have December 19th, 2013 on my on my official. Okay. I don't know if that's right. but <laughs> Well, it, okay. No, you're absolutely you're right. right. It came out because um, our manager, he's really into um, how the UK kind of does their stuff. And he's like, we got to put out a Christmas release. We're like, Christmas release? You know, in the US, it's like, dude. Got fourth it. quarter if nobody knows who you are you gotta wait because mm -hmm. like you know that's when all the artists put out their biggest hits and all this kind of stuff i don't know how it is now that's how it was then but like he was like nah man we're gonna put out a christmas release that's the big deal in the uk so we're gonna do that because we're because this is like indie and this is cool and that's what we're going for right so we put it out in the dead of winter and we put it out and then ryan seacrest f found it Got a, got a hold of it. Like he, like somebody yeah. heard it somewhere and sent it to someone over there, and yeah. they found it, and then literally got a phone call, and it was like, oh, and he was like, hey, I want to take it down. I want to do a full premiere on like my show, or, or you know, and and through the website, but I want it to be exclusive. So we actually took it. Came out in December nineteenth, mm -hmm. but by like Christmas time, we had already gotten those phone calls, and we were pulling it down so that then it could come out. You know, again Officially. with him, and he could premiere it and put it out everywhere. So um, that so, was cool. Yeah, more or less, the the life of the real song really began in um, in January of 2013 when he pushed it out there and shouted Did, it out and kind of launched it. You know, was your initial release? What what was the timeline on release? Was it video right away that Seacrest saw, or was it Spotify? Seacrest it was found a, it. Yeah, it was everything at once. We had, um, well, we had started a label with our manager at Ingrooves for distribution. So we mm -hmm. had like a good little team over there that was kind of going to, you know, we were at zero. Like we had had a deal. Building it ourselves. Yeah. We're like, we, we don't have any money. Like we don't like, we're just going to like put it out, you know, because otherwise we're going to sit here and run around trying to find somebody to do something with it. We're like, at worst. You put it out, it streams a little bit, and uh, you know maybe it gets a sink or so, and that's worth a day's work, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. you know? yeah. And so, and it's just the beginning of all these other songs that we want to put out, and so we put it out through our label on in, at Ingrooves. They kind of you know made some phone calls and ran it around, and it was at all the DSPs, and then put the video out at the same time on Vivo. You remember Vivo? Yeah, sure. Um, and, and so then it was just kind of like everywhere. There wasn't like a like a release plan or anything. We are just like, we got to get something out because we have, we want to start pushing vinyl pinups and really getting this thing off the ground, you know? Right. <clears throat> um, and then it just had a life of its own from there, really. One quick step back. Outside of you guys, who who was the first person that heard this song? Then our dog, yeah. We didn't, even have, we didn't have our dog yet. What? Like, He's always been here in no, my mind. We didn't, we didn't have, we didn't. Oh my we, God. I know this because he's his. He, he came home March 9th, 2013, and we did this song in the, I think in the fall, late summer of 2012. Okay. Something like that. Before Mojo. So I have 13 on the December 2013 of the release. I don't know. 
Okay, so that so okay, you're right. Okay, so Mojo, we did have the dog. I was like, I feel like he was there. <laughs> right, I'm sorry. Don't make me um, a bad dog mom. Dog wow. mom listeners, I I know he was there. Yeah, he was. There. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah. What what did management think of it when you played it for him? So we send him stuff all the time. He's like, fine, yeah, fine, yeah, fine. Send him gold rays, and it's like ring, ring, ring. Boom. Hey, what's going what's, on? With what's this? up with this song? <laughs> yeah. We were like, oh, Definitely okay, I don't know, it's just a song. Perked his ears on that one for yeah. sure, immediately. Did like, you know it had that? something did special you, in the sauce did, for sure. Did you know you were sending him a hit? Or did uh, you think it was just another one you wrote you oh. felt pretty good about? You, or you guys knew it was a hit? A we, hit? We, might have, we might have different answers, but yeah. I knew in my soul, the second I heard the whistle melody, I was like, this is something major. It's something special. It's something that doesn't come along every year. Like, you know, you have like yeah. one song like that every so often. Um, so I knew and it felt good in my soul and it just was like incredible to me. I don't know about what Brennan's answer is. We uh, might have hits, to... hits a big word. I don't know. It's kind of like, <laughs> I, I don't know. See, you know, different like, answer. <laughs> I knew, it was, I knew it was good. I don't ever know what a hit is until it happens. I, I gauge, <laughs> I gauge a hit based off of like reaction. Yeah. I think like, because, because it's kind of like just whatever makes people go, Hey, what's that? Hey, especially when. You're a young artist and you're just trying to get noticed. If you get noticed at all, that's the anything. That's the one. Okay, let's focus on this. Someone actually paid attention, you know. So yeah. So let's <laughs> let's talk about the music video. Um, I, I it's so great. It's it's like you know it's one of those like it was probably pretty cheap to shoot, but feels cool. The filter on the camera is cool. You guys look like you're having fun. We're jumping into yeah, a yeah. pool at the end. You're wearing the meow yeah. shirt. Which does this meow shirt still exist? From the video? I mean, what do you think? Hell I mean, yeah, it does. Look at this! So good! <laughs> I thought it was a Metallica shirt for yeah. a second. <laughs> you know what? I got this at a sick vintage shop like in LA, like probably a couple streets off of Hollywood Boulevard. And I was like, this is the shirt. This is what I'm going to wear in the music so video. Good. I just saw it and I knew it. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to show my stomach. I'm going to like find some little heart-shaped sunnies. Yep, she still I, exists. I love mm -hmm. it. I love it. Did you guys know how to roller skate? When somebody says like, oh, you're going to roller skate in this video, you're like, yeah, I'm going to roller skate. You're like, dude, I'm going to be so good. Y'all look out now. I'm going to be, I'm just going to be like. <laughs> like blue steel. Like Yeah, yeah, just like, you really, you're like, I mean, I'm not a kid no more. Like, um, I'm an adult. I know how to do this. I know how to handle myself. I'm in good shape, man. I'm going to kill this. Oh and you put those things on, and I think I ate shit immediately. <laughs> <laughs> so then you're trying to be you know? cool. Like, I like, put this out, and you're like, <laughs> I'm riding down the boardwalk singing this happy ass song and try not to die. And the boardwalk's not smooth. It's no. like ancient, like yeah. cracks everywhere. You know? Yeah. So let's, okay. So back to Ryan Seacrest. Yeah. He finds this. I mean, like, I remember you guys talking about this, and I was just like, I mean, this that's huge. Like, Ryan Seacrest wants to put it on his, like, it was like a YouTube channel or whatever he had, or TV show or something like that. Um, your minds yeah. have to be blown, right? And and does anybody know how he found oh, it? Yeah. Was it just he stumbled upon it? Did somebody pitch it to him? You know, you know, guys like him, or guys, you know, franchises like that, they have, like, dudes that are in charge and do debts I don't know, that are in charge of like finding content to put on there and finding things that are that is impacting and all this kind of stuff and so through there was a a guy and i be, i can't remember his name right now his name was michael something i could look it up again but anyway at the time he's a guy in la but he was very connected to nashville so he had a mutual friend of ours in nashville and that person from nashville had they saw us put out the song and they sent it to him or they reposted it or something and he found it and then he was the one that was like hey what's this that's right and then and then we met him talked to him and then he happened we he happened to be friends with a lot of other friends of ours in LA mm -hmm. and stuff so then he was like well I want to take this to Ryan he takes it to Ryan and Ryan's like yes let's do this they got to take it down i want to premiere it mm -hmm. and put it out so it was again ironically you know i mean we had it's always so funny because it's so ironic that we had run away from Nashville, but yet our connection to Nashville is kind of what so deep. got us kicking off in LA in a weird way. So, um, so that's kind of how it happened. It was like it was definitely through friends. It wasn't like going viral or anything yet, right? At all. Can we take a moment to like applaud your memory because yeah. I literally <laughs> forgot about that, and your memory is blowing my mind right now. Like that's 
Some things, insane. you remember some things. That's incredible. I don't remember I know. turn the oven off. but That's you know, so true. <laughs> we'll I'll just add. focus on the things you're really good at remembering. <laughs> so like the song comes out, Seacrest is on it. I, I mean, there's articles about you guys. It's crazy. What is that like? Like you guys are just like. So I'm lit- I'm from like a small town originally in Indiana. So for me, my, my reaction is probably going to be different than Brennan's. I was like freaking out. Like, z- obviously, Honey Badger, zero chill over here, right? It's happening. Freaking excited. My so happy. But <laughs> but here, for me, I remember the moment that I noticed things were, like, really starting to ramp up. I I was, like, um, a makeup artist at Mac for, for, like, a minute. Like, while we were, like, waiting on these, like, big songs, right? Sitting at the Grove at a restaurant having, like, a lunch break. And I just looked and my phone was blowing up. People were sending me articles left and right. Ryan Seacrest, like all the things all over, like the internet of gold rays. And it was like tons and tons of videos. And I'm like, what is happening? It's it's happening. And I remember texting Brennan and like forwarding everything to him. And I'm like, Brennan, do you check this out. Like, this is crazy. And it was just hundreds, like so much stuff all over. It was like, just like a wildfire spreading. So I knew that something big was about to happen and that it was like in the, the process of happening. But when you're in that exact moment and you're like seeing it like in real time, it's kind of like trippy because you're not quite sure what way it's going to go. You know what I mean? I was literally on cloud nine and just super excited about it. And I don't know what Brennan's reaction was. I think he was a little more level headed than I was like, well, we'll see. It's the the first time that I ever like experienced, as they call it, the power of the Internet, you know? I'm always kind of thinking to myself, like, well, what now? You know, like, what next? How do we, what do we do from here? You know what I mean? Like, you kind of have to go like, okay, well, what do we do now? Do we put out more music? Do we mm-hmm. do, you know, put out a bunch of pictures or videos? Or do we do interviews? Or do we do podcasts? You know, at the time, especially, like, everything, that, you know, the internet was certainly, like, big and happening and viral and stuff was going on and everything. But Instagram wasn't even really a thing. Instagram no. was just getting big, yeah. and musicians weren't really using it for that. It was mostly it was hipstamatic like, filters. Yeah, right. <laughs> so I think that when it first started popping off, I think we just kind of had to let it go and go like, I, I don't really know. You know, we're going to book some shows. We're going to like run around and play, you know, um, whatever, local things, small things, things that we get asked to do. We got asked to do a bunch of stuff, like all of a sudden to go play live. And we were like, oh, great. Yeah. You know, art gallery things. And San Francisco. We walk, went up there and did like the huge art gallery for Mac. Oh, the no, the, yeah, the, whatever their flagship store opening thing was. So then we're playing there. And then fun. all these people are like, who's this new band? What else is it? You, you're never really ready for it, you know? And then it just starts going and you just got to like, hold on, kind of figure it out from there, you uh-huh. know? Kara was able to live in the moment, and Brennan was thinking ahead of what's the next move, right? Yeah. Well, that's yeah. a good combination to have, right? It is a good combination. This is not a Bud Light, by the way. This is water. <laughs> <laughs> Anytime something good happens, I'm always, okay, what, what do we need to do next? Or is this going to I start thinking, is this going to be the best song I ever wrote, and I can never top it? Oh, no. Um, yeah, I, I mean. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. There's a way for that to be healthy, um, but it was not for me at the time. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Like it was definitely like shit. What now? What do we do? Now? It's like a lot of worry and a lot of. I'm like the hot out. air balloon. Like woo! Yeah. Brennan's like, wait a minute, hold I learned, on. I learned my lesson. Now. Let's write five more before we freak out. Yeah. <laughs> and you need both. I mean, I think that's the key. You got to have enjoy some of the moment, but think about the future a little bit. I don't, yeah. yeah, for sure. It's the way to do it. How did this song change your life? The, I mean, we talked about some of the initial things, but how did how did this song change your life? How how in depth do you want to get? Because like I'm kind of sitting in like the house. <laughs> yeah, it's, I mean, well, it was it was a lot of things. So first of all, like it was kind of the the first record that a lot of people had heard that was really kind of anything authentic that we had put out, which is hilarious. But like again, I say it: growing up in Nashville around the music business and everything, you're very intentional about every single thing you do, but you never really leave a lot of room to just do make the music you want to make and and do what you want to do. So first of all, it legitimized us in that sense, because you could tell we weren't chasing anything, you know, right? being able to kind of justify putting out more music, because now we had like a tiny little fan base of people that wanted to hear more music. And what did they, you know, the buzz created a vibe and attraction to where other writers wanted to like start writing other writers wanted wanted to write a gold raise or their version of that or write for their projects or 
collab, you know, all that stuff, which was great because it opened more doors because we had just moved to LA. So we didn't know a ton of people. So that was really great. It like opened the connections and I wasn't one of the Fairweather fans, right? I was, we were, we were buds and writing before. No. You were there already. We, okay. Yeah. Not at all. You've been there the whole time. You've been there the whole <laughs> <Yeah>. time. <laughs> no, but that, that was the small stuff. That was kind of the small stuff. The big stuff that really changed was, mm-hmm. was money for one thing. Um, you know, yeah. streaming, uh, when you when your things moving, even if if you own everything, like we all know this now, but at the it's like the streaming income is okay, it's, mm-hmm. it's something. And at the time, it was hey, for the first time we have like some money, you know. Um, but and for, well, for those who don't know the sync world, like it caught on to the sync world like wildfires. Like it was just like that's left. where I was going next. I know, but if I didn't say it, it wouldn't. You know, I couldn't get a word in. So anyway, yeah, and that was like a huge, huge thing, just like like took off. Tell us about some of the syncs that came in. The viral streaming thing brought more value to it in the sync world. So all of a sudden it was starting to be on television shows and starting to be on other things, and the syncs were starting to get bigger and bigger and bigger, and that was driving more streams, and then it was going more viral on summer playlists and all this kind of stuff. So it was really a slow growth kind of thing. Um, and at the, the further it went, the more like money it would bring. So it eventually attracted, um, it was found by Melissa Emmert Hutner, who is um, an a and She's an a and Cobalt now. She was an a and at the time at Network. Um, and she found it, called up, said, what's going on with these guys? Mm-hmm. They signed us. So we got our, pub- our very first publishing deal, like big publishing deal. Um, they upped the, the rate for all the the sinks. So that's when things really started to, that's when we were going like, Oh man, like this is really actually kind of, this has changed our lives pretty significantly in the past year. Mm -hmm. You know, the little, the little like articles and stuff and people liking your band and playing shows is like one thing, but the, the exponential jump with, with, as it got bigger, it just got bigger and bigger and bigger. And so it was about the end of, I think it was, it had had a lot of pretty, pretty, good looks but it was the end of um 20 maybe middle of 2015 we signed our publishing deal it was hitting you know it had done millions of streams at that point Mm -hmm. um and it had sold you know i mean it was like itunes it was selling and everything and then then we landed like a two-year-long Campaign. Campaign for Wawa, the gas kind of convenience store <laughs> company. And that was like Y'all can laugh, but that no, was a good one. <laughs> no, that was a good one, man. And that was like, okay, it's a union gig. So now mm-hmm. uh, yeah. like I mean, just really just being, you know, transparent about if you want to talk about how it changed your life, it's like, dude, first of all, you know, with ads, you know how it is. It's like they don't take a long time to pay. They're like, Okay, mm-hmm. you're in, boom. And all of a sudden we look in our bank account, we're like, What? We'd never seen that much money before at one yeah. time yeah and and we had just signed our pub deal and then that all came in and we were like what's going we don't even know what to do with this not you're not rich but it's still like it's a lot of money you know yeah and then union checks start coming in and mm-hmm. union checks are crazy because they don't do it like royalties where they give you a statement every quarter they just send you a check every time it runs so you open your mailbox and there's like 40 checks that just like fall out of your mailbox. And you're like, it kind of feels them, like the movies. You're like, yeah, yes, it's like, yes, well, right? this is a real, this is like the dream, you know? <laughs> yeah. And some of them, you know, they're like 20 bucks and some of them are a hundred bucks. But when you stack up a lot of them, then there's a lot of them there. So we were mm-hmm. like, we were like, for the first time in our lives, we don't have to worry about money. Uh, we can think about, you know, buying a house. We can think about uh, in rooms you know, with bigger writers. We can get in rooms with bigger writers. Our publishing deal is recouped. Like we're already. In good standing with our right. publisher, which is a hard thing to do, you know. Their network's being great for us. They're like working us like crazy. Yeah, I was gonna say they're pushing. They're more like eager to push you if you're doing things like that and your yeah. song's taken off. The bands, you know, we're like playing live shows. We're getting things are just moving and shaking. So really and truly, like there's the slow ramp up, but but it was you know it was about a year and a half or two years of like we looked up and we we're like wow things are totally different mm-hmm. than than they were pre gold rays, you know. Right. Um, and it was a really and it was a really awesome thing, you know. Thank um, God we didn't name it like Sunshine or yes, something. Yes, thank you know? God we didn't name it that. <laughs> right. good, good thing Kara then, save save that one. Otherwise, man, I don't yeah. know where you guys be. <laughs> yeah. I know. And the writing camps and all those yeah. fun things. So So yeah, it's it's like 
I know they always say it's, oh, does it only take one? It takes one. I mean, like, dude, this song was not a radio hit Mm -hmm. and it still changed our lives. So you have that start to the spark, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So is Gold Rays the best song you guys have ever written? That's a tough one um, because, you know, as an artist, you go through seasons where you like feel different moods and you have different like creative juices flowing. I feel like Gold Rays is in the top, top three for sure. But I mean, personally, I have other ones that I've that resonate with me as well, you know, that are different, that are that could be like, like slower, like moodier. Um, But as far as like the upbeat genre, like pop style, definitely that one's up there. I, you know, the irony is like the, the best songs that I feel like we've written actually are probably on our hard drive, you know, mm-hmm. which is kind of a, the ones that no one have, have ever heard, which one, you can yeah. probably relate to that, Chris, right? right? We talk about that. Like most yes. of the time people, the songs that people like the most, you're like, but that's not my favorite. I have like, th- like 30 other ones that I love more. Listen to this, listen to this, you know? Right. Yeah. The, the stuff we're writing right now is really inspired. Um, I think that now that we've worked with so many other artists and we're working also, you know, with so many you know, producing other artists and stuff. I think that we're making the best music that we've made probably right now. Um, I just don't know how it's going to come out, when it's going to come out, what it's going to look like, what makes sense. Um, but if you're just talking about pure, like quality, I think we're, we're kind of steadily, I think we've gotten a lot better than we were then. Right. Mm -hmm. You create something and then you let the world decide if it's good or bad and what they think of it. And, and yeah, there's nothing, Mm-hmm. I don't, not that I have any hits, but my favorite songs are on my hard drive, just like you guys probably. Yeah. yeah. In my house, it's like nobody, except for my six-year-old, comes down and says, Daddy, I love your new song. Uh, what's it called? Oh, yeah. I hope That's it wins. Sweet. Every day. And I'm like, this is oh, the best. Oh, my God. This yeah. the best. I hope it wins. I hope yeah. it wins. I'm going to start saying that to everybody. I hope it wins. Right? And that, like she, she, I think I told her one time it was like a spec thing, and it was like, okay, it's got to win. But now it's just she always thinks, it's, I hope this one wins. That's right? Uh, that's so sweet. That's amazing. That's, so I love that's it. really sweet. She's I love great. I, I, I wrote a huge yeah. journal entry the other day. I'm like, I got the best kid ever. She knows my love language is words of affirmation. She comes down and <laughs> pumps me up. It's <laughs> amazing. <laughs> Is there any parts of this song that you wish you could change? Are there things that bother you when you listen back to it? Is there like, man, I wish we could have that one back. I wish that. I think maybe if I was di- if I did it today, I'd probably mix it, screw it up, and mix it to hi fi or something. It's yeah. real like quiet, like or add not- too much reverb to the voice or something. Yeah, it's not like a. Su- I remember it like not being a super loud record at all um, because it was like because um, I had just. I had saturated a lot of stuff. I know this is nerdy, but I'd saturated a lot of stuff and, and, and I didn't totally know what I was doing. And so it ended up just kind of being this real, like, like, um, like super mid rangey kind of like not super loud record. Um, so I think, but I'm afraid if I did that, it might mess it up. You know, like yeah. if I made it, if I went and mixed it now, it would be like big and deep and bombastic, this, but yet, you know, just like it would smack too hard and it would just mm-hmm. be like, you know what I mean? Like I, I think that's probably what the cool the coolness of it. At the time I was really I would get bummed when it was on playlists because it just wasn't as like go as as a lot of the other stuff, especially for the time, but yeah. Like it, it was kind of just soft, you know? Yeah. Um nowadays I'm like I'm it's, it's probably great. what made it good. I, I mean a hundred percent when I listen to it, the magic of this is the sort of the smallness of it. Cause if it like it, it it makes it such an easy listen for anybody and everybody. Like yeah, it yeah. still moves. It's got guitar. It's cool, but it's not too loud for people. It's not too in your face. It just yeah. the whole thing. It makes it feel more dreamy. And yes, I, I'm with you. I would have made yeah. it like if you gave it to me to mix it, I'd make it too big. It would suck. I would ruin the song. And yet the sort of smallness, yeah. the kick's not like punching you in the face the whole time. The yeah. snares are just kind of yeah. there. It's small. It's glued together. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't It doesn't feel like it's like trying to punch you in the face with anything. That's yeah. awesome. That's good to hear. One specific nerd question for me, I just thought of like the vocal yeah. sound on that chorus is perfect. Is it is it just octaves? <laughs> is it the verb? How did you get that sound on that for the nerds that want to know? Like, how do you do that dreamy? It is three of Kara's vocals, very soft. Um, it's two of my vocals, maybe four of my vocals, very soft. It's a wall of sound. Hi. And then and then super high octave. Very soft, of like Kara, very soft. 
like super soft. But then that here's the here's the the thing that that I did that I figured out that was like my thing for a while, which is silly. But it was she nerves get your notepads out high octaves of it, and then used the Pro Tools air distortion crank to all hell, and <laughs> and then tucking that up underneath it, and that's what what kind of like gave it this like i don't know what it was it's this air on the top of it and it fills it out but then you're not all your vocals your lead vocals aren't super airy mm-hmm. so it's like i don't know there's that and then um dude i mean it's like it's literally like cla 76s maybe a little bit of maybe a little bit of eq3 pro tools stock eq kind of taking some harshness out maybe not i don't remember um the uh, it's all SM7, and then uh, I think at the time I was using a crack of the Waves IR1, and I was probably using one of Dave Pensado's like plate presets, you know. Yeah, this is super super nerdy, but did we have like the orange couch? <laughs> we had the orange couch, yeah. So we do we you had... remember the orange couch? I, I remember the orange couch. I'm trying to think of what did you was that part of the sound? It was the anywhere couch from like Urban Outfitters that you could like lift up. It was so light and like oh, you were just like yes. boop, like put it around. That was your vocal booth, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah that was our super, vocal booth. Because super ridiculous. well, and we had to use the SM7, awesome. you know, back then because it's like, dude, we lived on Normandy Avenue, dog, like so loud. next to a bus stop. It was like, I mean, there's just noise on everything, right? <laughs> um, but yeah, I, th- I mean, that really was the other thing about the vocals was like, don't they weren't too perfect? It was kind of like the whistles. It was like sing them, and then put like a little tuner on it to smooth it out, but sing it. Don't make it crazy tight. And that's kind of how you got that big wall of vocals. They all have to be like slightly out of tune. Mm -hmm. It can't be like vocal lined and tuned hard because then it sounds like Katy Perry, you know, you guys want to do some lightning round, uh, quick questions that are unrelated. Let's do it. it Okay. Favorite song of the moment. Oh, um, uh, wet leg. Um, on the shades long, on the shades long, long, all day long. That one. Actually, the the Deftones record from I think it was 2020. <laughs> it's called Ohms. The first song on there is called Genesis, and that is literally what I'm putting on. If it's not a podcast, I'm like putting that on right away. I've been okay. like boxing a lot, pumping so iron. It's, it's like <laughs> tough guy shit, you know. Guilty pleasure artists or band? You go first. I'm go for it. Oh no, man. Guilty pleasure goes. Ah. Uh, I don't know. I mean, I like Katy Perry, but I don't know if that's really like a guilty pleasure. But I think that she's like kind of cool and cheesy at the same time. That's yeah. mine. I don't know. Couldn't a little bit of right. Taylor Swift sprinkled in there. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Um, okay, here's a guilty pleasure. Queen's Reich. And I say guilty <laughs> because it is it is cornball prog metal. Oh, and I God. still like it. I still like it. Amongst guys like me and Chris, I like they're Queen's like, that Reich. doesn't count. That doesn't uh, count as a guilty pleasure. But in the big picture of the world... <laughs> You know, somebody comes in and they're like, hey, man, I really want you to make my record. And you're like, hey, do you like Queens Rock? They're like, no. The no. eyes of a stranger. Yes, dude. <laughs> Jet City oh. Woman. <laughs> I love Queen's Rock. Oh. So good. What song of yours do you think people are sleeping on that is exists that people could actually check out? Oh, I still think Hotel Mirror Hotel Mirror is, is, is a slept on song that is so good. And we even have a music video that like goes along with it and it's so cool and artsy and vibey. But that song, it's got something and for whatever reason it hasn't like sparked fire, you yeah. know. All right, I'm I'm gonna dig into that one next. Here's uh here's one of the lightning round. What band or artist have you changed your mind on in the last five years? I think that Sean Colvin's Sonny Came Home is an amazing record. Obviously we all know that now. Yeah. That record, you know, that they made was in, was incredibly well done. But at the time, I was like, "This is I hate this so much," and totally Same. switched. Now, now it's like you celebrate her whole catalog. Mm-hmm. You know, I think Tracy a lot Chapman, of, like Tracy you Chapman. know, one reason to stay here. And yeah. I hated that song so so. I Me hate. Too. I will use that word. Me yeah. too. Every time it came on, I was like, "And uh, is she saying stay here or steer? What is going on?" And now I'm like, "That's a good song." That's yeah. like a really good song. Her voice is money. It's like honey, you know? So yeah. that, I mean, that's a random reference, but that would be a strong, um, that would be mine for sure. Not yeah. a lot of new artists I haven't Mm-mm. changed my mind on. I, I'm kind of like, give it some cause time. I'm still here. I'm still, yeah. yeah give I'm it a few years. It. Yeah. Give it 10 years. It's looking back that I really start to go like, Oh, that was actually really good. Yeah. You know, 
and I hated it at the time. What are we doing today? What is vinyl pin vinyl, bleh, vinyl pinups doing today? <laughs> what are you guys doing? Well, Kara's doing? Kara's solo project is in the works right now. Um, mm -hmm. It's called KLA. Um, we she just did a song for Kevin Griffin's book that just came out, and then her first single is coming out next month. Um, she's writing it, and I'm producing it. Um, I'm weighing in if I think the writing isn't good, but it's mostly her. <laughs> Um, and I'm, and I'm trying to, and I'm also like really so following her. So he's saying it's her. good. Please, please yeah. follow up and listen, you guys. It's, it's follow, good. I'm following her lead on it. I'm letting it be her thing. And, and I'm going, you know, as a producer, what do you want it to be? You know? So I'm doing that. Um, I'm headed over to work right now. I've been producing a lot of other bands as well. Um, I just finished, uh, the moon taxi record. Um, I just finished a record with a band called the Josephines. It's really good. They're amazing. Um, we're doing some pre-pro uh, tomorrow with a band called Wild Love that's really incredible that everybody should watch out for. Um, and this afternoon, I've actually, I'm late and I'm going to be in trouble, but I have a right with Sorry. a band called The Foxies. Yeah. Um, and The Foxies are really awesome. And so. Pretty sure that they like Gwen Stefani too. Yeah. She's very, she's she into nails Gwen. that. Yeah, she's yeah. We have a new vinyl pinups record that's done. We're just trying to figure out when we're going to put it out because we're putting it out around her stuff. Mm -hmm. um, Kara, can you tell us any like sonically where, where is it Lana Del Rey meets Gwen Stefani? Is it? Uh... I'm I'm happy to talk about it. I'm thrilled. I'm so excited. It's been like a long time coming. It's definitely got um, a little bit of Lana Del Rey inspired feel to it all, darker tones. But it's the best way to describe it is kind of like motherhood. It's like a beautiful disaster. It's been mm -hmm. like this beautiful journey, but it's also had like really deep moments where um, you see like dark times and you're, you know, finally coming out through and you see the light as well. Like it kind of has like a flow to it. Um, and it also has a little bit of like some Charlie XCX influences. I love how she kind of like does some cool, like syncopated rhythms and things like that. But all of it is going to be um, just really, really like darker, cool, beautiful tones to it. It'll be it. launching in May, the first single. All right, I'm so excited. I've Thank you so much. It means a lot. I'm pumped. I don't, Bre I don't want Brennan's voice on this stuff. Come on, we no. just want to hear Carol. No, I love it. So, where can people find yeah. you guys? What's the best place to find you and explore your music? Who you are as people? What's the best place to find you? Well, pause because Brennan didn't even talk about the werewolves, and that's going to be in a movie. Oh, so the werewolves. that's yeah, something the werewolves badass. Project can... is another thing that's, that's with Brennan, not me. Talk, talk, yeah. So, Brennan has solo them. projects now. Yeah, tell us about the werewolves. Yeah, tell them about werewolves. It was initially just kind of a sync thing, but it was very similar to the same way of like, well, I just made it whatever I wanted, you know. Mm -hmm. And I've got almost a, kind of a whole record done, um, but we had I just did a song two versions of the same song that are going to be in a Bloomhouse movie called Totally Killer um, that comes out in the fall. And that's going to be really cool because they had, we, I had to write a song that's basically, it takes place in two different time periods. So you have to have the modern version, which is the metal yeah. version. <laughs> and then you have to have the old version, which is the emo version. So I'm going to put out both of those um, and then put out, you know, um, a couple other records, you know, with that and, and kind of do that thing for a little bit. If I'm crazy enough, maybe I'll go play it live, but it's, he should. Uh, I love yeah, it. it's pretty, it's, sick. it's pretty raucous, you know? Um, so yeah, that's it. Where but can you, get, people... you can find us on Spotify. Yeah. Where can people find us? Of course. Yeah. Um, any of your, any of the DSP, you know, Spotify, Apple music, look up vinyl pinups. Um, mm -hmm. if you, if you Google us, you can find us there. Um, Instagram, TikTok. Uh, Facebook, whatever you're looking at, we're on it. It's and, and it'll be under vinyl pinups. Mm -hmm. um, a good way to keep in really good touch is to follow it, either of our personal profiles, so mm -hmm. Kara Lord or Brennan Ertz, because then you can see what we're working on outside of vinyl pinups yeah. as well, which has been a lot of stuff lately. Um, and we're really active on both of those. So, um, you know. And I'll give we're, out your guys' the... home phone number at the end of this, too, so don't worry. Yeah, please. Yeah, please. Please. Address, <laughs> yeah. Um, state that we live in. Call the landline. Yeah. <laughs> Call the landline. <laughs> I got that landline number. I'm going to be calling you guys soon. Thank you guys so much for doing this. I, I love it. I'm sorry I kept you guys so long. I feel like I could talk to you guys forever, unfortunately. Or for, fortunately for me, but maybe unfortunately for you. Um, I love connecting with you guys. I love, I'm so glad to call you guys friends. You guys are – I'm inspired. By the way, talking to you, I'm inspired – I, 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 
I don't spend enough time making my own music and, and listening to you guys talk about it is inspiring me to want to do that. So I'm sure it's going to inspire That's awesome. That's too. Awesome. Yeah. That's so, awesome. so thank you for being awesome. And, uh, We'll see what happens from here. We love you, dude. Thank you so much. We got a crush on Hush. Thanks for having <laughs> us. <laughs> Thanks for listening to my interview with Brennan and Kara from the Vinyl Pinups. Hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. Please like, subscribe, and leave a comment. Every little bit helps as I'm starting out this channel.